Very important because if you need a plumber, you don't need them eight to five, do you? If you need an electrician, you need them at the time you need them. And see, a lot of us cater to people, and they, 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 people can't do business with us because of our hours. And even you've got to get some help and flexibility. Is your hours take and make a difference? <clears throat> it says, I'm open for business, okay? I'm open for contact. And I love it when you phone a place, and they say, look, if it's an emergency, we're not open right now, but if there is an emergency, call the following number. Okay? Okay? If it's really urgent, call the following number. Okay, Rawl, who you'll meet, uh, is outside the head on my product table, is that uh, our phone is always forward at the hip. So even if we get a call on the weekend or something, if it's really urgent or something, he can pick it up. Okay, and you usually get a hold of me as well. And so, it's, it's, am we open for contact? Am I open to have some fun? Okay. Who loves to do business with people that look like they're having fun, but yet at the same time they're being professional? Yes. Okay. What is marketing? And we're talking attitudinal marketing. Look, it's anything and everything that you and I do that help retain, develop, regain, and gain customers, and that leaves any kind of impression on past, present, and potential customers or those who can influence them. And all I'm saying is that anybody who handles the traffic in your business, anybody who makes any kind of contacts with customers is in marketing. The person that's in the credit department is in marketing. Because you take and you go get the business, you work hard to get it, somebody's a little bit late for a payment, and if they phone up and they're unnecessarily rude, then you don't want to do business with them anymore. Okay, and all that investment goes down the drain. So one of the keys is, is that everybody's in marketing. Now I'm gonna give you what I feel is the key principle in selling and in marketing. And it's called frequency. It's better to reach 50 of the right clients and right potential clients 20 times with the right form of contact, with the right solutions, rather than 500 potential clients twice. You follow that? The mother tongue that you learned to speak, did you know, or do you know, that you did not choose it? Somebody else chose it for you. And they kept repeating the words to you, and then you began to repeat them, and that's how you learned them. Everything we learn comes through frequency, okay? So when it comes to sales, it comes to marketing, frequency is important. In one research group, 12% of the salespeople continued calling after they got three no's from people, from the same prospects, and that 12% wrote 80% of all the sales in the group. They didn't give up. They worked the frequency. On another research group, 81% of the clients who converted from the competition to another company as supplier preference came over from the fifth contact and onward. Not the first, not the second, not the third, fourth. Fifth and onward is when they decided to switch preferences. Okay? We give up too easily. Frequency is powerful. In advertising, it's the same thing. It's, and I, I've run radio stations. I, I work at any of the Kaya FM people here. I didn't invite some of them out today. No? Uh, I do a lot of work with Kaya and a lot of the media people. And, uh, and the one thing I learned to help media work is to use frequency for my clients. And see, it's better to reach 10,000 of the right clients and right potential clients 20 times with the right message rather than 100,000 potential clients twice. See, what we get carried away with sometimes is reach. Somebody tells you, you pay this, you'll reach, you'll reach a million people. You go, wow, a million people? And then you run one ad to a million. And you don't get the frequency. There's a stadium that was a new stadium built in Soweto. It's called Soccer City. We can't use the other name in the room here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So on tour, I call it Soccer City. Okay. Now, now Soccer City will hold 94,500 people or so. Am I correct? Okay, 94,500. And let's say that you got a business, because I want to give you an example you'll never forget around frequency. And let's say you got a business, and it's got a big tray and a, and a, and a thing around your neck to help you carry it, but on it you've got peanuts, you got chocolate bars, you got Biltong, you got Chris, you got soft drinks, right? And so you want, and so, there's lots of people you see in the stadiums going around selling their wares that way, don't we? 
Okay, now what I say to you is, am I ever going to help your business? I'm going to let you speak to 94,500 people with your little business. And I'm going to let you at halftime, you are going to stand, okay, in the middle of Soccer City. And you're going to get to holler once with a microphone. Peanuts, <coughs> chocolate bars, <coughs> cool drinks, Bilton, Chris, come and get them. Or I'll give you another option. I said, there's 1,500 people in that section there. And all during the first half, and all during half time, and all during the second half, you can walk around that area, and here's what you can do. Peanuts, Chris, cool drink, lolly for your jolly. <laughs> Peanuts, built on. Cool drink, peanuts, Chris, cool drink, beer. <laughs> you look like you were dying for a beer, my friend. <laughs> okay, now tell me something. Which one will sell more? The second one. See, less people, more times. Remember that. Less people, less of the right people. I was at a call center conference uh, last week that I spoke at, but they had one company in there that had fantastic research. And what they showed us was that when it comes to call center and calling people on lists, that 75% of the effectiveness lies in the list. In other words, the right people. Okay, so you also, you got to focus on the right people with the right frequency, not just frequency, okay? So you take and you do that. To become a household brand, and even your household brand, just remember, you may only have a small customer base or a small area in a community and that's your market, that's fine, because you want to become the brand there. What I say about our company is we want to be known as, as the top people in sales and marketing and entrepreneurship training in the markets we choose to be in. I don't need to be for the world, okay? It's the market I choose to be in. So to become a household brand, we need consistency, number one. You can't keep changing the message, you're changing your brand, okay? So consistency with frequency over time is how you get a brand. And then the reach depends on how much money you got. I may only have enough money to reach 100 people 20 times. But if I have more money, I might reach 1,000 people 20 times. And then I have more money, I meet 100,000 people 20 times. You follow me? So you've got to be realistic about your budget in reference to the reach. Now, I'm going to show you a picture of a guy, and I want you to be honest with me. Six months ago, think back six months ago. Let's, take, let's say January, February. How many people honestly did not know this man, okay? Six months ago, how many people, honestly, put your hands up, did not know who he was? Come on, put him up, be honest, okay? We got about 30% of the people in here. Now, who is this man? Tell me who he is. <laughs> Trevor Noah. And who's he associated with? Sal C. And what's his title? CEO. CEO. And what does CEO mean? <laughs> Customer, <laughs> executive, Ex customer experience officer. Did you know, you know something? You guys learned that in a little over a month when they hit that campaign. Okay? And people are saying, is that campaign working? <laughs> now, I know it's working for Trevor. I'm not sure about Cell C. Because Trevor is everywhere, and Trevor's rates have doubled probably, and he's booked out solid <laughs> as a comedian. Okay? And that's an example, okay, of branding and frequency. His brand has gone up in huge value. Now, I can't tell you, you there's no way you and I got the money to spend the money that Cell C has spent. Okay? But you can see what happens when you focus with frequency. Your business cards, which I talked about. But have business cards for everyone. How many people have staff in your business besides you? Come on. Okay? If you've got staff in your business, give your staff personalized business cards. It motivates them. About two years ago, coming this January, 
I went to Swaziland. And Ned Bank, Swaziland, who has about 220 employees, wanted me to do a session, some sessions on Saturdays for all the staff and management of Ned Bank, Swaziland. And they wanted me to talk about team building and customer service. And they said, Bill, we'd like to lift the motivation of the people and also get everybody realizing that they're in marketing and that they're in sales. <coughs> okay, and by the way, uh, is there anybody in here who's not in sales? Anybody not in sales? Okay, because you know the answer. If you're alive, you're in sales. <laughs> right? If you want to go to Friday night, the person you live with doesn't want to go, you're in sales. <laughs> right? And you go out without her from 2 o'clock in the morning and you get home, you're really in sales. <laughs> okay. And all sales is, is creating an environment so an act of faith can take place. Okay, that's really what it is. And it's, and it's taken and it's in influencing people. Well, when I went to NetBank, what I said to them, and I've, and I've only had a few companies do it when I've recommended it, but senior management there took it. I said, give every single staff member in NetBank, including the tea ladies and the drivers, business cards with their names type set up. So they have their own business card. And then we teach them how to use that card in their communities and in the market and when they're talking to people and introducing them to the right people. Or if they have to write a note on the back that gives the person some guidance, they can take and do that. Now you will be doing something in the market that the competition can't even see. Okay? It's guerrilla marketing. That's what you call it. Okay? Guerrilla marketing. I said, and you put that out there, it's going to make a huge difference. And I said, but you're going to be surprised in the motivation of your staff. And they gave everybody a business card. And can you imagine some of those tea ladies, okay, going back into their communities and they say, just let me give you my card. I'm a domestic executive. Okay? And they feel good, right? Is there anybody here who's unemployed? You're, you're not full-time employed right now. Just out of interest. Okay, we've got a few people. Now, one of the things I say to that, too, if you're not employed, you know, it, it's kind of embarrassing sometimes when you're out socially and everybody's saying, so what do you do? And so what do you do? And so what do you do? And then they come to you, you know, and you run. Okay? You know, but they say, so, so what do you do? Instead of saying, well, look, I'm unemployed. Look at them and say, look, I'm full-time employed looking for work. <laughs> and here's my business card. See, who says that you as an individual are not allowed to have a business card? Because you are a business. How often do we have to write our name, address, phone numbers, and all the details down for people, and all you had to do was just give them a card? Okay? So it's a powerful weapon. It really is. And let me say this, that NetBank does happiness surveys. And they do it every year, and they do it all the divisions and all the countries. That year, which is a month later, they did the happiness survey, NetBank Swaziland come out with the highest ratings for happy employees of all the countries in Africa and all the divisions here in South Africa. Okay? And I believe the business card was a big part of it. Okay? So you take an official ambassadors. I've got a card coming now from Kai FM who I do work with, and they're making me an official ambassador. Why? Because I talk up their business all the time. And see, sometimes you have good customers that might like a car that says official ambassador. So it becomes a marketing tool. Set a daily goal. Give away when you meet. So set a goal of how many you're going to give away to the right people. Okay, because we often forget the importance of getting that card out there. Make your product into a business card. What am I talking about there?